Hello and welcome to IT in Canada. I'm Michael O'Neill and I'm joined today by Aldo Galoni, Canadian Cloud Leader for IBM Canada. Aldo, thank you so much for joining You're us. You're welcome, Michael, and thank you for spending the time with me. Subject of today's conversation, cloud deployment and optimization, let's jump right on in. Sure. Our survey results show that cloud adopters expect to achieve lower costs, improved IT productivity, and or improved business agility by deploying cloud. But it seems unlikely that all of these benefits are realized on launch. In your experience, is there a sequence to these benefits? Uh, yes, Michael, I believe there is. And actually, it's in the same sequence that you listed them. So, so IT cost reduction would be the first one. And that comes from the first, what I call the first steps or stages of getting to cloud, which is the virtualization and consolidation if you're in a private cloud situation. If you're in a public cloud situation, it's really leveraging the, the um, service providers sh shared and optimized infrastructure already. So, so it's really that reduced cost is the first one. And then as you get that first one in place, IT productivity, as, uh, as IT shops figure out how to redeploy labor to higher value situations, that's when you get the IT productivity. And then beyond that, once you start to re-engineer your, your own business processes to take advantage of that, of that IT infrastructure, that's where the agility comes into, comes into play. Can you give us an example or two of how your customers have built on success in these early benefit areas? Yes, so typically, uh, Michael, our customers will start with, with what I call a low-risk uh, workload, a Tier 4 workload, a potentially development and test environment, or a disaster recovery, whatever they view as Tier 4. Mm -hmm. um, they'll, they'll get that to a common set of infrastructure, whether that's public or private, mm -hmm. and, and drive those, that initial step change in cost, cost reduction. And then they'll start to re-engineer their IT and business processes around it. So that's typically an approach, a recipe that, that uh, most of our customers follow. So that's an interesting point that you make, that you start down either a public or a private path as, you, as you're beginning to explore the advantages of cloud. Are there differences in terms of the initial benefits that your customers realize and they, if they move down a public or a private path? Well, it is highly dependent on the customer themselves and the size of their infrastructure, the amount of... Uh, over capacity they have in terms of private versus public. But, but typically, when someone moves to public, they see an initial step change which is larger than their, than their private evolution. Mm -hmm. Because they're already leveraging a service provider's uh, highly optimized infrastructure, and they're, and they're typically sharing that infrastructure with other customers in a public environment. So, so typically, they see that, that first step change quicker in the public environment because mm -hmm. the private side is a more evolutionary path. Okay, if you see greater initial impact from the public cloud, do you see greater long-term impact from the private cloud? Again, it's very dependent on the customer. So my view is that um, in terms of if you're a larger customer with a, a, a lot of uh, critical mass in terms of labor and, and critical mass in terms of uh, legacy assets, mm -hmm. um, if you do private cloud really well and your workload is non-spiky, it's more predictable, then really long term, if you execute well, you'll probably be uh, less expensive in a private environment. But customers really have to be honest with themselves on how efficient they can operate a private cloud versus a service provider. Um, honesty is one of those traits that everybody covets, but not everybody gets an opportunity to experience. Um, are there steps, the common steps that IT managers can take to make sure that they realize the benefits that are available to them from cloud, yeah. public or private? Yeah, so, uh, so again, it's, it's really that on the private side, it's about consolidating and virtualizing first, then standardizing your service catalog and really being disciplined around what services you want to offer your customers. And then once you, once you standardize, which is the most difficult part, by the way, mm -hmm. is really being disciplined around what services you're going to provide then that last part is the automation, right? So that's a private cloud. That's a typical uh, scenario for a private cloud environment. On the public cloud side, you have to remember that when you go to a public cloud provider, you're really outsourcing. You know, people don't necessarily like that <laughs> word, but you really are outsourcing uh, to a service provider. So you really, if you're not mature in understanding how to procure services uh, in what I call a heterogeneous service environment now, um, then that's something that, that can take you, um, take you by surprise. Um, you know, my view on this is that uh, cloud is very, very sexy and very, very appealing. And it really is. It's got a lot, of, huge amount of economic benefits. And uh, it's something, you know, in terms of most customers, all customers will need to get to. 
but along the way they can't throw out the IT textbook. And really, at the, at the end of the, and at the end of the day, that's what I find customers need to be disciplined about. That you don't give up your IT disciplines on the way to cloud. You have to make those judicious uh, decisions um, and be pragmatic about it. So it seems from your guidance then that the key to success in private cloud, standardizing service catalogs and automating, the key to success in public cloud, uh, developing expertise in service procurement and integrating those services with your internal services are chapters out of that IT textbook. Yeah, wholehearted, wholeheartedly agree, Michael. So then I guess cloud amplifies the benefits of IT once you are in the deployment and optimization stage, but doesn't replace the need to be fundamentally good at the business of IT. Absolutely. With that, let's wrap. On behalf of IT in Canada, I'm Michael O'Neill. Aldo, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're welcome.